My dumb ass used to think it was about being dope. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized the music industry was designed to capitalize on artists. Mm. A lot of us just be making music and we be having fun. Mm -hmm. It just be fun. It be the homies. And then you attach the industry to it. Mm. The rap n is getting the least money off the rap. 99 times out of 100. The drug dealer, the jeweler, the strip in the club, the publicist. The flight. The, 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 the airlines. The travel agent. The CEO of the label. The he homies. Put, he he going to put so many people, kids through school before he put his kids through school. Even a rapper that get a whole bunch of money from the industry directly, cash out. You cash out $30 million, $40 million for an hour. That's not just because you're so good at making music. Yeah. Or that you're so good at making money. But, it's that you advertise to the audience a lifestyle that go along with what the industry, mm. yep. the industry is trying to sell. The industry trying to sell liquor in the club, yep. mm. tickets to the club, yep. tickets to the show. Yep. Like so, all this. You're the billboard. So if you go back to the things that Will I Am said, that music has always been used to sell something else. It's used to sell hardware. I want to sell my radio. Well, I'm going to use music as a marketing mechanism to make people want radio so they can hear this music, but not selling the music itself. Right. This actually alluded to that same thing, right? On that part of it, he, he, he talked about other things, right? Like, all right, at first I just thought this shit was about being dope, actually being good at it. Nah. Right. Then we get into the marketing and brand and who's more of a talent or just all these other elements. So there's one part of, Oh, it's not about, necessarily the best talent or doing the coolest thing mm -hmm. that already sucks to hear from any artist. But when you get back to that point of, yo, you represent a lifestyle, all right? And the industry as a whole is pushing this lifestyle because if you aren't holding the bottles, all right? If you aren't holding the chains, then my industry dies, all right? A lot of times we think specifically, that's what I love about this, a lot of times we think specifically about the brand that we're touting at the moment. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I'm not about to have Cristal because I don't want to market Cristal. I'm not about to have De Leon because I don't want to market De Leon. I'm not about to wear a chain from Johnny or shout him out because I don't want to shout out Johnny unless I got a cut of these businesses. Ooh, I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. But then you go to that next level. Well, shit, if I just got you wearing a chain, drinking something you know what i mean flexing some type of vehicle it's all gonna come back to me at the end of the day it's the same reason why you see mcdonald's wendy's burger king all next to each other because hey bro, as long as people know this is the area i go to when i'm hungry at some point they're gonna hit me on the block mm -hmm. i'm one day they're gonna be like oh, i'm tired of going to mcdonald's let me get something different well what's another option over there so as long as we market this industry as a whole and grow the pie we're all going to win. And again, it's one thing to think about the individual brand equity that you may or might may not have because of it. But with, it almost gets into that conspiracy side of things when you think about just pushing an idea and I want to mm -hmm. market this lifestyle, not even on like an evil side of it, but just what am I encouraged, all right, and incentivized to allow to bubble to the top. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Uh, that's why I, I, I want somebody that's done like, you know, research into 
what non music industry the music industry is invested in. You know what I'm saying? I know there's that conspiracy of like them being deep in like the prison system. Yeah. I wonder if like some of these labels and things are like invested in liquor companies and maybe they have a lot of stock and gold and shit like that, right? And it's like, hey, we need to keep pushing any of these that the sellers. I'm just thinking, I'm just speculating, I'm just wondering, you know what I'm saying? Because it will make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Um, and then some of it too, I think, is just the fans put those expectations on the artists. Hey, bro, like you don't drink, you don't have no chains on, you ain't got no cool car. You know what I'm saying? You fucking, especially in rap, bro. Rap fans are toxic. You know, rap fans, rap fans are easily the most toxic fans there are. So, right. I think, but yeah, I think. What I will hope that artists kind of take away from that is that I need to be conscious of who I can sell things to and what I would sell to them, right? right. Because it doesn't have to be these things that we're talking about. I know that people are like, I don't want to sell liquor, I don't want to sell, but right, but like, even if you're someone like a, um, let me think about it, like, we talked on the last episode about how certain female artists are just better at at selling products because they can monetize like every aspect of them, right? I can I can wear lashes, I can monetize my lashes, my nails, you know what I'm saying? The, the polish I put on, like things like that, man. Like you can always find something in your brand that you can sell if you're willing to look outside of the usual. You know what I'm saying? If you're not, liquor liquor chains, cars gonna always be there for you, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you're a rapper. But if you want to do something different, like the the world is kinda open enough and, you know, fans that kinda have enough um interest where you can monetize different things around them. Like I remember pitching an idea to a homie of mine um, about selling like custom skins for like PlayStation controllers because his fan base is really big in the gaming. And I'm like, bro, like just make some like twenty dollars PlayStation skins. You know what I'm saying? Sell them shits. Shit will go up. You never did it, so if somebody wants the idea, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's like things like that, right? Like you have as an artist have to always remember at the end of the day, the industry respects, supports, and promotes. The person that can sell shit. They don't care what you selling, but can you sell some shit? Yeah, you sell something. Something, right. So if you can just prove, hey, I can sell anything. T-shirts, hats, stickers, kickball tournament tickets, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and you can prove that that's speaking to whatever demographic, like, I mean, you'll you'll still get that. I think still get the same look. Just in rap, we're just so used to that being like the big the big three. Liquor, jewelry, cars, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, bro, like that's the also my big takeaway from the clip is like this shit is way more than than talent, bro. It's always gonna be about what's your brand, what's your look, who can you sell to, and then you know after maybe three or four other things that I can't think of right now, and then music. See, this <laughs> is why I always can't respect when people like to say stuff like music doesn't have any influence. All right, yeah, no, that's like, crazy. Oh man, yeah, you know, oh there was a lot of negative music that I heard listen to and I love to listen to the drugs and the guns and all that stuff, but I don't do the drugs and the guns and all that stuff. Yeah, you might have had a structure that it didn't work for you, right? And you were able to not do certain things. However, on a macro, the numbers show it increases the yeah. behavior of whatever that is. And like whether we're talking about drugs or guns, whether we're talking about party, whether we're talking about twerking, like whatever it is, it starts to affect every single thing else. Yep. Right. It's because it's marketing. That's how it works, right? Yep. Yep. It sensitizes and then encourages at the end of the day. So music is the perfect conduit to like hijack people into whatever space that we want to get them into. Mm -hmm. Right. And it made me think about cigarettes. Now there's something deeper. Maybe it was something else um, that I was actually trying to think of, but I found this about cigarettes where it said in 1940s, doctors were part of the original endorsers of cigarettes. Yep. Well, I could, we had to convince people to yep. do this thing, right? So it said in 1940s, tobacco companies hired doctors and dentists to endorse their products to reduce public health concerns about smoking risks using slogans like just what the doctor ordered and more doctors smoke camels. Tobacco companies misled people, showing that physicians were also smokers and that cigarettes were fine for your health. All right. So we use one thing to bring people over to the other thing. All right. Same type of interesting mentality. Now, there's another thing. Yeah, they use celebrity endorsements, old um, film and things like that. Like, it looks so cool. Like, you, you see it all the time in old um, film. But what I found this was interesting. And this is in the 1990s, which is. Makes it even more interesting. Kids friendly characters. In the 1990s, tobacco companies introduced cartoon characters like Joe Campbell to heighten tobacco's appeal for kids. 
The practice has since been banned, <laughs> but the deception still continues by means of fruity flavors and brightly colored tobacco packaging. Tobacco companies also use products and advertisements in stores and gas stations at direct eye level of children, <laughs> which, you know, I'm about to start paying attention to that. Not really. Whatever. It's like the, the current vaping is, bro. Have you ever looked at some of these vapes, bro, that motherfuckers be smoking? But I remember seeing this guy with one, and when he hit it, it started like, Spinning at the end and colors start flashing. I'm like, bro, that was not made for an adult, bro. That was made for kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some, some impressions yeah. with kids, but yeah. the tobacco industry is great at marketing, bro. I can't yeah. they, they find a way every couple of years to like weave their way back into some shit. The way, cause vapes is basically, basically that. Yeah. It was dying, but vapes was a cool way to bring it back. Right? Yeah, exactly. And market the teenagers. Yeah, exactly. In the, along the same story. <laughs> now, I don't know how true. In literal, my dad means, because sometimes, I don't know, bro means he say stuff so nonchalant, you don't know if he's serious, but I really do think he was serious because he never lies. You just laugh kind of like Adam, and he's like, what are you laughing at? That's the thing. Like, but he said the reason he got into, <laughs> oh boy, he said he really didn't mess with smoking weed like that because, like, oh, niggas were doing it too often. All right? He like, damn, I can't do this all the time. <laughs> so, he had to, like, so he had to move on to something else. <laughs> It did, but he said, <laughs> um, <laughs> cigarettes, the reason he started, because he wanted to learn how to do this trick. Like that. This man smokes to this day, but yeah, it was like, he had, he, well, it was some guy that was like blowing some kind of circle. And he, of course you got the circles that you blow the big circle, you blow small circles in between. It wasn't that. It was more like, I don't know, some kind of ongoing circle, which... I don't know. Old cigarettes aren't really built for that. You have to be really talented. Yeah. <laughs> Apes, you know, it's different. <laughs> Point is, if you think about the same type of marketing, <laughs> like kids or whatever, I don't know how old he was, but just like we do it. No, little simple, cool shit like that <laughs> can attract people, you know? So it's interesting. And that, and music is, I mean, it's just fertile ground for any version of making something cool and influencing something else, the artists are participating in the least of it. Yeah. Hip hop got smart first where we start saying, okay, we want the endorsements. We're bringing people this money. Steve Stout noticed that when Will Smith had the Ray-Bans on and they've been in black movie, the Ray-Ban sales went crazy. You know what I mean? Jay-Z started to notice some things and boycott all this great stuff. But we still are a long way from even the understanding that music, apparently, right, isn't, it's, it's, it's to be consumed, but it's not for sale. Yeah. Which is a hard concept to get with. Cause, and I think we were in a newer generation, we're misled to thinking, oh, well, they were selling CDs. So music was for sale. But then when you break it down from the Will I Am concept and basically say, no, they weren't selling music, they were selling the CDs and make that small differentiation, like this goes back to, well, shoot, music right now is probably being consumed most like it. I don't want to say it's the value of music. The va music is obviously valuable, right? Mm -hmm. But in some senses, the value of music has been showing truer than it ever has on the negative and positive side. Positive because we can track more of its usage, right? Positive because we can see how culture of music impacts other spaces, but the negative in terms of what will what consumers are really willing to pay for. It. That price has technically always been the same. Yeah. I, I was willing to buy that CD because I really wanted to hear this music, so I was able to jump over that barrier, but that changes when, when it was an album, that changes when it's an MB3, it changes with whatever it is, and I don't know, man, it's, 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 it's still something that I'm wrapping my head around. Again, I get the basic concept, but I feel like at one point it's going to, like, click, and it, it, there's something happening in my brain, bro. I'm, I'm telling I'm going to come back one day, and I'll just be like, Eureka! You rough for real. <laughs> we need to flip X, Y, and Z. And I done I done hacked the game in the matrix in a whole new way. But I, I, I feel like I you know, you start in the matrix, then you can see the matrix. Yeah. You know what I mean? But just because you can see the matrix, don't mean 
you gotta hack the matrix. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people just be seeing the matrix and don't realize that's not enough. I wanna hack that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Just wait on it. <laughs> just wait on it. Now, next topic though. 